When you take a sample from a population, you may find a specific mean or average and a specific standard deviation. But if you would repeat that again and take another sample from the same population, you might find different results, depending on the size of your sample. The smaller the sample, the larger the chance is that you will have varying results. So we need to calculate with a 95% probability, that is the most common way, to say within which range will results be the next time. We calculate that by using the standard error. The standard error is on the horizontal axis plotted, and if the standard error is 1.96 times away from the mean you found, then we will say that is a borderline case. Everything beyond that we will not accept with a 95% probability that that is correct. So, and this is minus 1.96. So we have to calculate the margin, and then we will say what are the results in the future. They will be between what we found in this sample and minus the margin and plus the margin. So I'm going to show you two ways to find out how large your sample should be if you want a, a small margin for your results. You don't want a large margin. So what I'm doing here is I'm using uh, the pH value. I found a mean and a standard deviation in a sample of 35. And then next we will do that for a sample of 10. Let's do this one first. Why is 30 here the borderline case? Uh, if you are over 30, then the results will be almost identical for the two when we are going to calculate things. We want a 95% probability, confidence level. So with two tails that is 5%, with a one tail that is 2.5%. So we are going to calculate what is the z value. The z value is based on a normal distribution and it's calculated with the function norms inverse. Based on a one tail percent and that's why we got minus 1.96. If you don't want that minus, it puts that norms inverse inside the abs function. Then we need to calculate the standard error. The standard error is always the standard deviation you found divided by the square root of the number of cases. Um, usually they say the number of cases minus one. They tweak it by subtracting one. Um, it, it's up to you. In this case I did minus one. So what is the margin? The margin is always the distance in standard error units. So I need the standard error times the z value and in this case in, inside an absolute function. So what is the, the minimum mean I can expect the next time with a 95% confidence? That is the mean we actually found minus the margin and the maximum would be the mean we found plus the margin. This is okay if we have more than 30 cases. Under 30 the z value is not very reliable anymore. So we need the so-called t-value, the student's t-test. So the t-value in this case is calculated by using the t-inverse function. It uses the probability level, but because t-curves are not symmetrical, like we saw before, minus and plus, it's always on the plus side, we use the two-tailed version, 5%, and not the 2.5% that we use for the z version. So this is the t-value. Notice that it's larger than 1.96 because I have only 10 cases. So I calculate again the standard error, that is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of cases in this situation minus 1. So the margin is the multiplication of t times the standard error and the rest is clear, the minimum and the maximum. So do you see that this confidence interval is much larger than here because I didn't have 35 cases but 10.
Now let's say for whatever reason you would like instead of 0.108 you want 0.08. So we are lowering the limit. So how many cases would I need in order to get a narrower interval? You can do that by using the Gold Seek tool. So we want to set this value, which is a calculated value, to 0.08. So I select that cell, I go to Data, What If Analysis, Gold Seek, and I'm going to set this cell, which has to have a calculated value in it, to the value that I set to 0.08. by changing what cell. Of course you could change your confidence level, but that's not a wise thing to do. So you probably want to change the size of the sample. And when I click on OK, it will say in order to reach that 0.08, I would need, I'm going to accept this, 62 cases in my sample. That is much more. There is always a price for that if you want to lower your limit. I'm going to do something similar here. How many cases would I need if I want to lower the limit to 0.2 instead of 0.241? So we are going to do a gold seek performance on that cell. Gold seek, what if analysis, gold seek, set that one to 0.2 to a specific value by changing again the size of the sample. And the machine came up with 14 cases you would need in your sample. That takes more time and more money of your budget, but that's the price you have to pay. If you don't want to go for all these calculations and do the goal seek, you can also use, and that is the second option we have, this formula. The margin divided by the mean and this is 1.96 for the Z value. So what we did here, only the gray cells have calculations in it. The rest is set. Let's say you had this set. And here we are going to calculate what is the Z value. That is norms inverse based on one tail, 2.5% for in total a 95% confidence. I put that inside absolute. That is the one. So now we are going to calculate how many would we need in the sample in order to reach that Z value. I would just use that formula that I have shown here in the yellow. That's basically what it is. And it says you need 33 cases to find that. Okay. But if I have small samples, then I have to use the t function. Unfortunately, the t function needs also the sample size. And the sample size is something I'm trying to find. So I have here what they call a circular reference. For this one, uses the t value, and the t value uses the size. So, because that is circular reference, I have to put iteration on. You go to File, Options, Formulas, and make sure that you enable iterative calculation. I put the maximum to thousands, there is a safe setting. Okay. So what we have now is that they can still find a way for each other. So, uh, first of all, Let's see again that these two are very close because we are over 30 cases. These are very close too. You can always use T, but you can use Z only over 30 or 32 basically. Okay. So how, how can I go to much sl smaller samples? Let's say we, have a, we are going to set that standard deviation to 0.1 which is very tiny. And it recalculates everything and it says you would still need a size of 16 cases. Because T is much more conservative for low sample sizes.
So if you are dealing with something with small sample sizes because you have a very small budget, you just have to hope that your standard deviation is small so that you can find in 16 cases um, a mean of 4.15 and a standard deviation of 0 0.1.